To tell you the truth, I wasn't going to run this year. Uh, it takes too much time, effort, money. The system is made exactly to make it so the rich people can run and the poor people can't. It's made it, they've made the political system to where you don't want to get involved, you don't want to know the issues because you're tired of it. When you say, I don't care and I don't want to know, you're falling into the exact agenda of the liberals, the rhinos in the party, which if you don't know what a rhino is, it's a Republican by name only. The state is very familiar with one because I will gladly call out the governor's one. Um, when elected, as Michelle has pointed out, I will have very little friends in the state house. I know many members who have gone against the establishment, and even though they have they brought up great bills afterwards, they will be blocked. And they'll be blocked because that's the punishment they'll give you if you support the wrong thing. Here in Wyoming, we are one of the most corrupt systems within all 50 states. We have sh too many shareholders in Capitol Hill. And you can easily find out if you watch where the money goes. Uh, this next session is going to be very important. As you know, we have way huge, nice shortfalls in our revenue. Whose fault is that? It's our leadership and our governors. He's been warned many times that this is going to happen, and they've ignored it. And I'm not 100% sure, but can you tell me what were the cuts, the amount of the cuts that were coming out that we did? There hasn't been any word of a special session yet, has there? No, I don't think so. But that wants to cost money, so then they have to justify it. <laughs> but anyways, it'd be along the rounds of, you said 37? Speaking of that, if you didn't know, the day that over 300 people got laid off in our coal mine, governor's office got pay rates. What do you think of that? You know, they say, Chris talks politics, this and that, and this and that, and get tired of it. But I'm one of those people that when things like this happen, I don't see. 248 million dollars in cuts now that we've got to do after they are already done the budget because of our revenue. You know you can blame Obama all you want, but there's two entities you gotta be blaming at the same time. So the governor of this state, the leadership in our legislature, and the companies that employ. They all should have seen it coming. They like to call Hillary crooked, but guess what? We gotta deal with the crooked son of a gun that's already in there. And of course, you know, we with the uh, BLM lands situation, everything, they're not in Obama's pocket. They're in Hillary's ready to come run. That's another thing that I want to talk about. And I, you would never have heard this come out of my mouth until about a month ago. Is I was, uh, well, first I was actively working on Rand Paul for President's campaign. But after doing my research and figuring out some more things, it is clear to me of who I need to support. And then it comes to a shocker to me, too. But I, on the end of November, I will be casting my vote for Donald Trump. Now, the establishment is trying to say, oh, but we'll run a third candidate. There's a number one reason of why they want to run that third candidate. Because you're going to have the staunch conservatives go one way, the establishment go in the other way, and the liberals are going to take the election. And that's exactly what the 
Rhinos in our party exactly what? It is set up to where, and I don't even understand how Donald Trump actually beat the system because I know he was not supposed to be in front of her in the beginning. I know one person that was, we would have been way better off. Well, he was out way too early, and I don't understand that because he was the number one establishment candidate, and that was Jeff Bush. But this election, you need to get your friends and your family, get them out to vote, but if you're going to vote, make a very educated vote. We've got things like Agenda 21 coming into our counties. Converse County, you know, they said, well, it ain't going to happen. Our county commissioners didn't listen. Our city councils didn't listen. Now you can drive up and down and see Agenda 21 every single day. The, only, the other thing you can tie with Agenda 121 is Common Core Standards. And if you aren't familiar with what the Agenda 21 is, it's what the United Nations thinks the world should look like in the 21st century. When they talk about a one world government, your United Nations is your one world government. Who sits at the table of the United Nations? The old leader of our country. Yeah. And that he has no problem with. I give props to uh, sorry, I'm at a loss right now. It was Britain, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I give props for Britain leaving the European Union. And I think pretty soon here, if things don't start streaming up, you're gonna see Texas leave the Union of the United States. And I hope that Wyoming will follow. But is that going to happen? Not with the leadership we have right now. They play into the federal pocket. They don't care. They want your taxes. And speaking of taxes, because of the short revenue fall, I know there have been conversations, and I expect it to be a bill in the next session or the two sessions, to bring in a state income tax into Wyoming. You want to see businesses come into the state, you're not going to see that happen, you're going to see more leave. The reason business, businesses come into the state is because we are too low tax. I just filled out a questionnaire actually because I said I will not support any tax. I will not support a tax increase on tobacco, which is, is a big push right now. I will not support a higher tax in uh, the county level, which they're trying to push a new rec center still. I don't understand if the city hasn't learned yet, but you know, we have all these nice houses and establishments that people can't even buy now. But when it comes to issues, and it comes to my vote after I'm elected, the governor ain't my boss. And you know what, there's been candidates that will tell you, once you get in there, there's a lovely man by the name of Phil Nichols. Thank goodness he's not running. Amen. <laughs> but I know he took Cindy Hill in after she was elected as superintendent of public construction. He took her in the office and he told her exactly how we run this state. And excuse my language, but if they take me into the room, I'm going to tell them to piss off. This state, if we do not win this election, folks like me, Tom Reeder, Kendall Croker, Marty Halverson, Frankie Thorne running against uh, Eric Barlow, if we do not win this election, you are going to see your state lose its freedom more and more every single day. And where we're, we came to this point, and people are starting to wake them up and figure out what's exactly going on. But they say, oh, it's the government's fault. No, it's our fault. We didn't pay attention and we allowed it to happen. So now it's time to take the reins, yank them out of their hands, and take our state back and then take our country back. 
People think, ooh, let's run for this big office. No. It starts at the local level. And they, they've asked me what my three main agenda, if I had an agenda, I have an agenda of the people. But what I'd like to see happen, my first three acts that I will do, is I want to see Common Core out of the state. Not replaced like she said, I want it gone. Secondly, I want to make sure no taxes are raised. If you want to make a balanced budget with a short revenue fall, this is how you do it. Use common sense budgeting to cut the size of the government. The size of the Wyoming government has tripled in size per capita. We have, in fact, I got off the phone with a gentleman from Colorado the other day who had done some numbers in my district. <coughs> Here in Congress County, 28% of our employment is government jobs. I have got a problem with that. Thirdly, I want to make sure Obamacare stays the hell out of our state. Medicare expansion will not pass. Because that's exactly what it is. If you pay, you know, and on the questionnaire that I got the other day, is said, will you support the Medicaid expansion to give over 120,000 Wyoming Knights insurance? That may give them insurance. But you know, we have a state short revenue shortfall right now. What are we going to do in two years when the federal government says, well, guess what? The bill's up to you. We don't have the money. We have a lovely rainy day fund, but guess what? We got laws that say we can use that for certain things. It's time we woke up and did the right thing. Right now, the state with the governor and a few others are under a lawsuit because they're doing something that many of you probably don't even know what's happening. Right now, the legislature and the governor's office are no longer in the state capitol right now. It's under capital construction. We're spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars out of our state budget to redo the state capital when we're in a revenue shortfall. But here's the problem. In order to have this capital construction, there's got to be a vote. When this first came out, me and Frank E. Thorne went up to Kathy Russell and we said, when did this vote happen? Frank couldn't remember it. I couldn't remember it since I've been in the state. So they asked the governor. Your governor's words? Oh, it happened before me. They asked Friedenthal. Friedenthal said, they never took a vote under me. So now what, we can go 10 years back to a vote or something? I don't think so. There's a lawsuit now, and I believe the state treasurer is one. There's two lawsuits. Mark Gordon, who's doing one, the treasurer, and um, Carl Ryan, who's the other. But it's time to take our state back. That's all I've got to say. Why this is why I'm running? Because we don't have the right people running the state making the decisions, and if I have to drag my head through the water financially, I will. So I'd appreciate your vote on August 16th, and if you're not my district, I would encourage you to go and research your candidates and make sure you're putting the right one in the office. Thank you for coming. I hope the mill was pleasant. I hope to visit with some of you out there. I will be here for a little bit. But thank you and God bless.